Hey there, welcome to Rachel to Mum. It's so lovely to connect again. I've been a bit quiet over the past couple of weeks. It's been a bit busy, but so great to be here. Uh, today I thought I would talk about the truth and lying and fibs and porky pies and telling stories. It's such a such a big part of childhood. <laughs> so, um, so I'm just gonna say at the start, the truth is very important to me. Um, I really don't like lying. Uh, I think deceit is a, is, is a horrible thing. <laughs> um, and um, yeah, so I've always, I was raised like that. My mum has always stressed that the truth is important. Um, so it's a really big thing in our family. And I had some wonderful advice from my friend Shanley uh, from Heart Matters Academy in Cape Town. And she once said to me, she said, you never tell your child not to lie. And I thought, goodness me, I tell my children not to lie all the time. And she said, no, you don't tell your child not to lie. You tell your child to tell the truth. Um, so it was a shift and I, I probably, that was about two years ago. Um, and since then I've really focused on uh, never telling my children not to lie. Uh, so now if something happens and um, and I hear a little lie come out, I say, um, like, say Joey's done something and I say, what happened? And, and what he says, I know is a lie. I'll say to him, my boy, just remember, the truth is the most important thing. Please tell the truth. And nine times out of 10, he does. Um, and then the first thing I do is I applaud that. I say, my boy, I'm so proud of you for telling the truth. Um, and I keep it separate to what has happened. So there will still be a consequence for what's happened, um, but I'm really proud of you for telling the truth. And I know it must've been hard knowing that there'll be a consequence, but it means that I can trust you. Um, and that's really important. And we talk a lot about um, our, our wall of trust and we talk about bricks and our wall of trust. And um, sometimes if I see he's teetering on the end <laughs> edge of not telling the truth, I'll say to him, my boy, remember we tell the truth because if we tell the truth, we build, we put a brick on that wall of trust. Um, but unfortunately, uh, if we don't tell the truth, we, 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 we break down that wall. And remember, we need to be able to trust each other. Um, so it's, it gives him sort of a visual of what he can imagine. And, and then when he has told the truth, I say, well done, you know, telling the truth, you know, there may still be a consequence for your action, but because you told the truth, you put a brick on that wall of trust and our wall is getting stronger and we are trusting each other more. So. That's our approach to, to truth and lies in our family. But we've had a little bit of a, a, a bump, <laughs> and that's with the telling stories. Now, my eldest, Joey, is, um, he is, he, he's about facts. When he tells something, he needs it to, to be perfect. So I, I love watching the different way my children tell stories because when Joey tells you a story, he's not really focused on you. He's focused on what he's saying. He's lined up all the facts in his head and he wants to get it out exactly perfectly. Benji, on the other hand, <laughs> is a storyteller. He's a narrator. So when Benji tells a story, he's not actually interested in the story. He's busy watching the expressions of all the people he's talking to, and he's talking to them, and he's looking for reactions. Um, and it's wonderful. It's great. It's also an amazing quality. <laughs> and he's so amusing and entertaining because of it. Um, but we hit a bit of a problem because Joey wants things to be right and factual and Benji wants to make up the most fantastic stories. Um, and, and Joey gets really upset because he says, Benji, you're lying. Benji, that's not the truth. That's not what happened. Because Benji does. He creates these elaborate stories of what happened. Um, so I've had to learn to manage it because telling stories is really important for children to do. It's a really important skill. One of the reasons it's important is because if I can't tell a story, if I can't imagine a different sequence of events, I can't see that I have choice and advocacy in things. So if I can only see that you go A, B, C to get to C, I can't see that actually what I could do is go A, D, E, F, C and get to the same thing. Or I might want a different outcome and the story is not preordained. It's not set in stone. So telling stories is a really big part of problem solving. Um, and imagination and sort of that fantasy world is a really big part of um, understanding that I can choose how I want this to turn out. It doesn't have to be a set in stone narrative. Uh, so it is really something you want to inspire in your children and foster in your children. So how do you do that um, without accepting a lie? 
um, and I'm becoming quite skilled at this art because of my little child number two. So, um, and I see it a lot in my practice as well, especially children um, where there's some sort of form of learning difficulty um, and some self-esteem issue. I think often they create these fantastic stories because they think it'll get them um, acknowledgement or um, credit, street cred. <laughs> and the problem is that other children they, they don't, you know, when the story's not believable, it doesn't give you street credits. You know, then other children do what Joey does and say, that's not true, you're lying. So what I'm trying very hard to do with Benji is when he tells me a story. So, so I, try and, I try and buy into the story, but in a very clear way that it is a story. And I know it's a story, but I'm still buying into it. So, for example, he came and said to me yesterday, he said, my dad said that tomorrow everyone's gonna die. Now, I know his dad didn't say that. Um, and also it's pretty morbid. <laughs> um, so, I have a choice. I can buy into it or I can refute it. So I could have said, no my bench, daddy didn't say that, that's not true. Let's be honest, let's speak the truth. But in it, I saw that there was something there. He had a story, there was something. So instead, I said, my boysie, oh, that's terrible. Everyone's gonna die tomorrow. Oh. Now knowing Benji and knowing the type of stories Benji loves and how he so loves characters and superheroes and stories about saving, I said, oh, but wouldn't, wouldn't it be amazing if a superhero could come and save everyone? Which superhero shall we pretend comes? <gasps> shall we pretend Batman or Hulk? Which one is going to save the day? And then I asked a question. I showed him I was involved in the story and I asked a question. But I also showed him that I knew that it was a story. And I think that this is the key to fostering that narrative and that ability to, to create these fantastic stories, but at the same time, um, engaging with your child in a way that you show them that you know that it's a story and that it's okay to make stories. Um, so then he, I, I used a question to engage him. So it was a reciprocal thing. So which superhero should we include? And he said, oh yeah, Hulk, Hulk's gonna come and save the day. Okay, what's Hulk gonna do? And then we could go on this path of story together. And I have found that in therapy, when children come and say, oh, well, my dad, yesterday, my dad, he's actually an astronaut and he went to the moon. Instead of saying, no, my boy, actually, you know, your dad's an accountant <laughs> or is that the truth and um, I buy into it and I buy into it as a story so I take I make the understanding that we both know it's a story and that's okay because it's so cool so I'll, again I'll be like oh imagine having an astronaut as your dad no it's real hey it's real it's real my dad's really an astronaut that's so cool my boy and what do astronauts do they go to the moon if your dad went to the moon what would he do there so you buy into the story, you carry on the story, um, but you make the simple understanding, the, the, um, the premise underneath, that you know it's a story and that's okay. Anyway, so I found that that's a really nice way of fostering the truth and ensuring that the truth is important, but also allowing for those tales and those stories and those, um, and those fibs. Um, which aren't your serious lies. I hope that's useful um, and I hope that you find a way to use it to foster stories in your home um, and to foster narratives in your home. Um, it's a really lovely playful way of doing it and I think it's a great way of learning learning about the truth and about stories. Have a wonderful week further and I look forward to connecting again soon.